వెల్కమ్ టు ఈపీజీ పాఠశాల ఐఎమ్ డాక్టర్ టి సాయిచంద్ర మౌళి ఫార్మా అసోసియేట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఆఫ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ రైల్వే కాలేజ్ ఉస్మానియా యూనివర్సిటీ హైదరాబాద్ ఇన్ దిస్ పేపర్ విల్ బి డిస్కసింగ్ ట్వంటీ ఎయిత్ సెంచురీ లిటరీ సినారియో ఇన్ ఇంగ్లాండ్ విల్ బి కవరింగ్ సోషియో ఎకనామిక్ పొలిటికల్ cultural backgrounds and ramifications of various events that took place during the 20th century in England and the impact of that on the literary contribution, literary creation. We can comfortably divide the 20th century scenario into five eras. The first one is Edwardian era, stretching from 1900 to 1914. The second one, the First World War took place during 1914-18 and the interwar period from 1918 to 39 constitutes the third part of that century. Then the Second World War was waged between 1939 and 1945. Post-war Britain from 1945 to the turn of the millennium stretching from 50s to the 90s makes an interesting reading and offers uh, interesting insights. The First World War resulted from clash of interest between two groups of nations. On one side we have triple alliance comprising Germany, Austria, Hungary and uh, Italy. Triple entity comprised France, England and Russia. Here the era witnessed growing militarism with large standing armies. Every nation was highly egoistic and feeling superior to all other countries around. Growing imperialistic tendencies was conspicuous. It stretched and resulted in ruthless competition for natural resources, especially minerals. Jingoistic nationalism leading, leading to territorial disputes, rivalries and rush for resources also was a causative factor. A series of uh, disastrous events between 28th June and 4th August 1914, beginning with the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary, might be quite interesting and uh, should create uh, awareness about the events that are to take place subsequently. Let's talk about the uh, impact of the Great War on England. England had no estimate of the economic cost of war. The war shattered the economy of England. England's wish was to continue business and carry on as usual despite the war. The period from 1918 to 1939 constituted interwar period and it can be mentioned as uh, the session or the phase during which Britain's last bit of glory was on view. Then on it was a decline and decline only for a few more decades. The big four, the Allied powers, came together to broker a fragile peace to end the world war. The war to end all wars through America as a new world power. With its industrial and military might, it would soon replace England in global politics. The general strike of 1927 and the Great Depression during 1929 had their own impact on the incidents on the history of England in general. In 1927, the conservative government of Stanley Baldwin faces a huge general strike called by trade unions of miners, railwaymen, and dock workers. In 1929, financial meltdown of Wall Street in New York sends European economy into a tizzy 
and it has been high levels of unemployment was a vexing problem witnessed during the time world war 2 fought between 1939 to 1945 caused great economic misery and despair and this misery economic despair might have forced germany into an action of desperation which triggered the second world war adolf hitler came to power in 1933 with a promise to reverse the treaty of versailles he withdraws from the disarmament conference and leaves the league of nations rise of dictatorships was an alarming fact witnessed during the time in europe england avoids it by introducing parliamentary reforms post war britain that's uh, the period from 1945 to 51 had seen the formation of a labor government labor party formed the government and came to power in 1945 british exports stood at an all time low and there were calls we may say frantic calls for reforms and legislations to alleviate the situation the chief areas of concern were nationalization and economic planning social welfare and trade union law now let's move to the next two decades that is 1950s and 1960s 1950s in england showed a slow but steady economic recovery signs of affluence after 1951 were very much on view the 60s can be termed as a new decade of permissiveness in sexual mores growth of uh, youth cultures and uh, pop music people were growingly turning to culture and leisure time activities they were desperately seeking uh, an escape route from the grim economic uh, realities of life in society it was also a time accepted uh, for l- looking at absurdities of post war life and also by looking away from the immediate present day situation and uh, commitments as well as compelling uh, demands of the time 1970s can be termed as a period when oil crisis the return of uh, mass unemployment and uh, worsening industrial relationships are typical fare on the menu The rise of Thatcherism signaled the end of consensual politics in Britain. Her superiority and stern manner of functioning, holding all power in her hands, in a way marked a turn in British political life and political situation. Then the attention of the government was shifting from measures to welfare. of the people to aggressive capitalism in other words we may say that the shift from welfare to consumerism or capitalism was a, a major factor that was witnessed during thatcher thatcher's rule the socio cultural landscape of england from 1900 to 1914 is marked by the rise of merchant capitalism industrial growth was very much there changing urban landscape in london manchester birmingham and liverpool was also a remarkable feature of the times increasing population and large scale migration was a trouble troubling factor known or felt during the period it was quite palpable in many ways one third of working class population in english cities lived in poverty the east end of london those days 
became a derogatory term linked with the filth, squalor and deprivation. During the time of Ripper's murders, the area had two principal minority groups, the Irish and the Jewish. Small communities of Black Britons lived close to docks and ports of larger cities. In a way, these slowly turned into slums and ghettos, if you may call so. A large number of Jewish immigrants also turned, tended to live near docks or to inhabit the most affordable housing areas. Working class culture demands uh, attention and proper discussion in the 20th century in England. England had one of the largest working class population uprooted from their traditional vocations the working class had lost its social and cultural moorings. It uh, also led to unrest and a sort of uh, disquiet in uh, different strata in the society. Leisure activities like partying in pubs, gambling and playing on watching football were gaining popularity and patronage. Cricket was a gentleman's game as is called today also, and football was uh, deemed and termed as a workers' game or working class game. Bourgeois society and culture in the 20th century also deserve our attention. Women entered middle class professions, notably in education and law, due to the expansion of compulsory mass education initiated by the Education Act of 1817. Talking about sex in public was uh, still a taboo in spite of the law and of growing opportunities for women to get education and also get employment opportunities. Most large towns and cities had at least one musical hall. The middle class consumed daily stories from the newspapers magazines and journals. Let us turn our attention to economy and politics from 1900 to 1914 in England. This is the first part of 20th century, if we may call it so. England was a leading manufacturing country with the textile, iron and steel and coal and shipbuilding uh, industries. And um, it was dominating some of the areas as a major force. Labor unrest from 1911 to 13 proved that uh, lack of collective bargaining could be disastrous to industry. The First World War gave a significant boost to collective bargaining as large sectors of the economy came within the scope of the Munitions War Act of 1915. Socialist groups evolved into the most powerful vehicle for socialism in Britain. By 1924, the first Labour government was voted to power, replacing the Conservatives. The rise of Labour as a new political force considerably weakened the Liberals and their party scheme. The British Empire before the year 1914 faced certain challenges from countries in Europe, notably from France and Germany. And they also posed the challenge to English, English superiority or British superiority in Africa, British governance and administration in Africa. Back home, the issue of home rule for Ireland made by Liberal Prime Minister William Gladstone, was defeated in the British Parliament. The Irish question persisted, rankling and remaining as a festering wound for a long time. The Easter Uprising of 1916 was a major event to be mentioned subsequently. What's the impact of the Great War? The Great War changed gender equations 
to a greater extent in England, the war created new employment opportunities for millions of women. Gender lines became increasingly ambiguous. Sexes were demanding equality. Women were demanding more autonomy and authority. Men and women who believed that gender order was being turned upside down preferred to call the Great War as a sex war. Poetry created during the period has come to be known as a war poetry. Major poets to mention during the period are Wilfred Owen, Richard Aldington, Herbert Reed, Rupert Brooke, Siegfried Sassoon, Isaac Rosenberg, and Robert Greaves. They recorded their uh, views, uh, pains, uh, and uh, responses to the war and prevailing social conditions in England in their poetry. Discussions of war poetry assimilated into a historical doctrine expressing truth of uh, war. Images of war like darkness, guns, mud, rain, gas, bullets, shells, barbed wire, rats, lies, etc. acquired significance. A study of socio-economical, political and cultural background in England during the 20th century is quite interesting and creates a awareness about the prevailing situation in different arenas and also in the literary field and the ramifications of the same in the subsequent decades to follow. The two great wars, Great Depression, deteriorating economic power, loss of political power, emergence of America as a new force among the nations of the world, may be mentioned as the major features of this era. Working class got slowly alienated from the rich. Working class was confined to certain areas in the city of London and other cities as well. The people who migrated from other countries also had to live in certain quarters, in certain areas, away from the places where the affluent lived in general. As far as the cultural scenario is concerned, we can say that people started spending more time in leisurely activities, in visiting clubs, pubs, and enjoying themselves to the maximum possible extent. Cricket was viewed as, and remains even today, as a gentleman's game. It was the prerogative and privilege of the rich to play cricket, while the working class was condemned to or relegated to playing football. In other words, football came to be associated with the working class and cricket was uh, synonymous with uh, the rich and the affluent and their power. Common man was not supposed to join hands with the rich as far as uh, games are also concerned. The century also witnessed the emergence of women power slowly and steadily. After an act of uh, act to educate women was passed in British Parliament. More and more women got opportunities to study and find uh, better employment opportunities. And the wars were condemned by certain prudes or by certain conservative-minded people as the triggering factors for alienating the sexes and uh, the causative factor of upsurge of the women and feminism and uh, feminist power.
women were drawn to various services chiefly among them to mention are teaching and nursing or teaching and working in the hospitals women found new found freedom during this period which is slowly spread to other countries and today it is a, a global phenomena that women power is on the rise and they are ruling certain countries coming to political situation dictatorships in certain parts of europe threatened england's suzerainty and superiority during its administration in africa also england's power was relegated and they had to compete with others and as far as the government uh, policies were concerned a shift from welfare schemes and welfare measures to capitalist reforms is a major feature to be mentioned war created inspiration disturbed many destroyed millions and caused a grief and wounded the souls of sensitive people more notably among them poets thus the poetry written during the wars about the war by those who were troubled by the war is has come to be known as war poetry here it becomes a little difficult to separate historical events from literary scenario whether history prompted literary creation or literary creations reflected historical events is difficult to differentiate and define thank you for visiting e patashala